All right, so we're going to try to finish up problem 13 here on your review, which is determining whether the function's even odd or neither. And as I stated in the end of the last video, if you get a if you plug in f of negative x and you get the same function, it's even. And if you plug in it, it f of negative x and you get the opposite function, it's odd. If you don't get one of those two things, it's going to be neither. So in problem 18 here, um, you're looking at um, plugging in f of negative x to the function. Let's try to scroll here right in the right spot. Here we go. So we plug in f of negative x. We get negative x cubed minus, minus 4 times negative x. And we simplify that. Cubing in negative x that should be written this way. So cubing a negative x would be the same as negative x times negative x times negative x, which is negative x because there's three negatives. Negative x cubed, these two negatives here would make it positive four x. This is the same as saying negative one times x cubed minus 4x if we factor out the negative, which means we change the signs everywhere. That means it is the opposite. So this one is odd because we change the signs everywhere. Now if this was um, an x squared here, if it was x cubed minus 4x squared, it would be neither because you would change the sign on the odd one, but you wouldn't change it on the even one when you square it. So it's this one is odd because it's basically negative 1 times the function. If you say f of negative x is negative 1 times the function, or negative f of x, then it's odd. If you get f of negative x and you plug it in there, and you don't change the signs, you just get f of x back, then it's even. So this is even. This is odd. So 18 is odd. 20. 20 looks like it's odd too, but I don't think it is because we don't change the sign on the constant. So I think that's going to be a neither. So if you have g of negative x there, you have 1 minus a negative x plus a negative x cubed. So you're going to get 1 plus x minus x cubed. Well, we did change the sign here from the original negative up here, and we did change the sign here from the negative to the positive. We changed two of the signs, but we didn't change this one. This is not equal to negative 1 times this function. If we were to multiply this out, we'd get negative 1 plus x minus x cubed. Well, we got close to that. We got the plus x and the plus minus x cubed, but we didn't get the negative 1. So this one is neither. It didn't change all the signs. It didn't completely make it the opposite, which is negative 1 times it. And let's look at 21. So 21 says f of x equals that function. We're going to do f of negative x. So, so we have x over x squared, or 1 plus x squared. 1 plus x squared. So f of negative x, we're testing out whether it's even or odd, it's going to be negative x over 1 minus plus a negative x to the second power. So we're going to end up with negative x over 1 plus x squared. It didn't change on the bottom because when you square a negative it's that. So the question in this, this is not even for sure because we did get a sign change at the top. But is it odd? Is a question mark. So is it the same as negative 1 times x over 1 plus x squared? Is it the same? And negative 1 is the same as negative 1 over 1, right? 
So when you multiply, you can multiply the top or the bottom by that. And this does look like negative 1 times this part. So this is true. It is odd. So we didn't find an even one there, but we found two odds and a neither. All right, we're going to move on to problem 14 now. Problem 14 has to do with your graphing calculator. So your graphing calculator, um, can look like this. So we're going to use our graphing calculator to help us solve this problem. So the first thing we want to do here is put in the function uh, x cubed um, plus, minus 2x plus 10. All right, we put the function in y equals. We push um, zoom 6 to get the standard viewing window. So looks like it has a little looped up here. We're going to have to go a little higher. So I'm going to go back to my window and reset it, make it a little higher. That's the y maximum. So we're going to go up to 15 maybe instead of 10. Let's see if that will show everything I need. There we go. We got a little loop there. Now it says graph. And so this would be my window setting. My window setting would be to say this. So A would be to say you know your x your x min is equal to negative 10 your x max equals 10 your x your y minimum equals negative 10 and your y maximum equals neg or positive 15 to see the little loop in there okay so that would be what i would say in that graphing part of it and then I would use my graphing calculator to approximate, so I just do second, second calculate, and then I hit number one, and it asks me to type in a value. I want 1.67 value, and it will give me 1.67 because I can see 1.67 on the x-axis. As long as it's on the x-axis, it should tell you what it is. So we push enter. So basically, there's my answer right here, 11.31. We want three decimal places, so 11.317 is our answer here. So I'd put that right here, 11.317. All right, going back to my graph again. So now I'm going to find the zeros. There's only one zero right here. Okay, we do that under the Calculate menu as well. That's number two, so we hit two. It says left bound. We move our cursor until we get to the left of the crossing point here, which is there. That's We crossed it there. That's left of it. We hit enter. We go to the right of crossing, which just took me one click. We go enter. It says guess. You could try to move closer, but you're not going to get any closer than that because it's pretty steep there. So you push enter one more time. And there's our zero, negative 2.462. So we'd write that down right here. So your zero is at negative 2.462 comma zero. There's only one. If there was another one, you would use the same process again to find another zero if it crossed again. This is not a zero. That's a y-intercept. Now there's two max and min values right there. We're going to find both of those using the calculate menu again. We're going to start with the minimum, so let's do number three, minimum. So I move the cursor to the left of the minimum. The minimum value is right here for me. I'm going to move it left of the minimum. That looks pretty close to the minimum. I hit enter. I keep going to the right until I pass the minimum. I hit enter. I come back to where I think the enter is the minimum. Push enter again. So there's my minimum point. So it's um, 0 0.8168.911, 0 0.816, 0 0.816, um, 8.911 is the minimum. And the maximum is going to be another point. So let's look at that. Let's make this a little smaller. Maybe I can do that. And then we can see the graph and calculator the whole time. All right, here we go. 
Now I can see it the whole time, or most of the time. Okay, so now we're going to do the minimum maximum. Okay, so I go second, calculate again, or trace. We're going to go down to maximum, which is four. It says left bound, so here's my maximum here. So I have to, got to be left to the maximum, which is about right there. Hit enter, go right of the maximum, hit enter. Get where we think the maximum is or close, hit enter, or you can just hit enter again. It'll find it anyway. So there's our maximum, negative 0.816 comma 11.088 or 089. So negative 0.816, uh, 11.089 is my answer there. Now my next question is when is it equal to x equals 5. So what I go there to do is I would then go to my y equals and put 5 in there so I can find out where it be the same as 5. It's just the same as the letter F here. We're going to put that in there too. But this one says it's equal just to 5. So I push graph. So there's only one value right there. So this is where it equals 5. So I take the calculate menu again and hit intersect. And that will tell us first curve, we just push enter. Second curve jumps down to the bottom of the next curve, hit enter. Guess we can move it over close to where we think the intersection is. If there's more than one, we'll have to move it close to each one so it finds both of them. So there's my intersection point. That's what I would write down. This is the actual value of the answer. So x is going to be this number. So in this problem, I'm going to write x is approximately negative 2.095 because that's the answer for the intersection which is the answer for the x value of the intersection. Now on the last part here we're going to do the same exact thing but we're not going to be equal to 5 we're equal to 3x plus 2 so we type in 3x plus 2. We hit graph and we're doing the same thing we're looking for intersection points in this case, there's only one right there. If there were more than one, we'd have to, when we do intersect, we'd have to take our guess and move it close to each one, each intersection point. So our guess is crucial here because if there's more than one, it'll only find the closest one each time. So here's our intersection point. So there's our answer for this one. So our answer for this one is x is approximately 2 negative 2.802803. All right, so that's that answer. So that's using the graphing calculator to solve a problem. That's on the test for sure, so you need to practice that and make sure you bring your calculator to class. Now the last review question is graphing. Actually, there's two more review questions. Is um, basically looking at piecewise graphs. So we have two pieces here. Um, each piece has its own domain. And so let me tr start with just by drawing a rough graph of what this looks like. So my domain on my first one starts at negative 2 and goes to 1. So we're just going to graph this piece, 3x. So we're going to graph um, x and 3x between negative 2 and 1. Alright, so that's what we're looking for in the first piece. Now, I put negative 2 into that 3x and I get negative 6 because it's negative 2 times 3 and 1 times 3 is 3. So that means that those are going to be the values where I start my graphs or end, end my graph because this is a, a closed interval here. So negative 2 is going to go to negative 6. So when I'm graphing that, I'd be down here at negative 6. Okay, at 2 and a negative 6, it would be an open circle though because it's only less than up here. So that's crucial that you look up here and see the symbol. This is an open circle. We start there, but we don't have a point there. And then we're going to end at 1, 3. So we end right here, but that's a closed circle because of this inequality symbol. So we just graph the line through that, um, through that those values so that we get 
from that point to that point. That's 